So in today's feature, I'm with Lee Scott from the Starag Group. We're gonna be talking about aluminum machining within the aerospace sector. Um, Lee, I, I do love aircraft. I love going on holiday. I love being on them. Um, how is the industry at the moment? And what sort of parts would you be making on your machines that fit within it? Well, the industry is buoyant at the moment, especially after COVID and on the, on, on the increase. I mean, rates, single R rates are upwards of 70 or, or people are being told to get ready for rates upwards of 70. So there's going to be a lot of aluminium parts. What's that, parts 70 aircraft per? Per month. Per month. 70 yeah. a month. So typical parts might be a smaller parts like a, a D-rib or, or an A-frame type component through a range of, say, ribs and spars, bulkheads, those kind of parts. So from as big as your hand, if you like, up to several metres long. And it's fair to say it's a great industry to be involved in and to, and to be servicing. But in order to do that, there are certain challenges that you may need to overcome to be competitive, for example. So what are those challenges that people face in the aerospace sector machining components? Well, I think through, through the complete range of sizes of part, most parts come from plate, some from forgings, uh, but, but most parts are plates. So over 95% of the plate is turned into swarf. So very, very effective roughing processes, very effective finishing of the surfaces, and also um, the automation of, of, of the handling systems to get the parts on and off effectively as well. I mean, is everybody, and it might sound a stupid question, looking to make these these parts that you mentioned even quicker and even quicker all the time, and they're looking towards the technology in order to do that? Well, the market's constantly telling us they're being driven down on costs. So um, I think even when you win a contract, you're then challenged to reduce costs over the, the next two, three, four years. So cost is, is the biggest driver and, 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 and you'll only reduce costs by reducing time. And when we look at your machines, some of the ones playing on the screen, I've seen them in real life in action. They're just jaw dropping how fast they are and how much metal removal you can produce. This is really what we're talking about, isn't it? Well, we're, we're talking about uh, 10 to 12 litres of aluminium per minute when roughing. So an, an oil drum, if you like, in less than a minute. So there's, uh, there's a lot of swarf produced. You've got to get rid of that swarf, uh, even on the small machines. And then, of course, when, when, you, when you're actually finishing, um, you've got to be able to very dynamically move the machine around the, uh, the pockets and the outside shapes of these parts. Which is certainly where the echo speed head technology comes in. And talking about heads, spindles, you, you, you position yourself quite uniquely in some respects within the industry, don't you? Because you need a lot of power, you know, kind of at the lower, at the lower end on the torque curve as well, don't you? Not just a straight line as you just... As you, you, you do. You, you, need, you, need, um, you need your maximum power, at, I'd, I'd say around anything from 16,000 revs upwards. So if you put in a large cutter on, let's say a 50 millimeter indexable tool, you want to be burying that tool and taking some massive cuts and you're producing buckets of swarf every, every minute. But we've taken the technology from the very large machines now through the medium and even into the small machines. So even the small machines have got the 30,000 rev spindle, massive, massive metal removal. And I want to talk to you then about the automation then, because there's an area here where um, your, your tables are quite capable in terms of the loads that you can put on them, fixturing parts up. The engineering solution is very important as well, isn't it? And the automation. Absolutely. And, and again, it stems from the larger machines. So even on the larger machines, we have automated pallet systems across the whole range. So the, the, the change over time is only just a very short number of minutes. Um, we've taken that technology into the medium and the small machines. And on a small machine, if, you, if you're manufacturing a component in just a few minutes, you can't have somebody standing there just constantly feeding that machine with raw material and setting up. So on our machines, we do have an advantage that the table group can take a much heavier weight than most of our competitors. So we can put a tombstone and multiple parts on a table. You get a longer in-machine in, in cycle time. You're coupled with twin pallet and you're often coupled up to either a robot or an FMS system. So it's all about keeping those very hungry machines fed. Um, Lee, what are the machines within the Starag Group's portfolio that we see here and that are perfect for aluminium machining within the, aer within the aerospace uh, environment? Well, if, we, if, we, if we talk large, we're looking at the Echo Speed Machine as, as featured in, in, in the movie behind us. Starag's STC range where you've got a B-axis table and an A-axis head, extremely dynamic, capable machine for the medium-sized parts. Then on the smaller machines, we're using... Heckert's new compact range with, with the five axis trunnion table, horizontal spindle, 30,000 revs, 
and again coupled with the automation so you see a lot of movies at the moment with very fast machines with a, a billet held in a, a couple of ice jaws it's great as long as your parts squashed and as long as you're going to be loading and unloading the part by hand but really i don't think that's feasible not it's not real world market. parts in some in in some respects is it? it you know parts are very different as you see here in the movies yeah we we we, we, we develop our processes for real components so You've got to hold your part right, you've got to be able to load your part right, you've got to be able to machine your part right. You've also got to be able to cope with things like distortion and all the other problems that you have associated with machining. Okay, brilliant. If you're interested in aluminium machining within the aerospace sector, then of course talk to the Starag Group about the machines that uh, Lee talks about if you really want to find that competitive edge. Thank you, Lee. Thank you.